Hi Thomas. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening again for our Fujifilm uh, live podcast. So tonight, uh, I have with me Thomas Kuhn, uh, as photographer from Malaysia. And we are going to share with you guys some uh, thoughts and some insight about travel photography when we travel. So uh, between Thomas and myself, I guess we also travel a lot for you know street uh, travel photography. But tonight, probably we we'll do more about street. Um, so maybe maybe Thomas, you can share with us. Uh, maybe just short intro of yourself because uh, maybe some of the guys here might not be very familiar with you. So maybe just a, a short introduction about yourself. Okay. Uh, good, good evening. So uh, welcome to tonight's session that uh, uh, first time we do a joint session with uh, Fujifilm Singapore. And, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm uh, uh, with uh, William. So I just do a little bit of uh, in, uh, introduce myself with a few pictures. Okay. I, uh, so uh, my name is Thomas Poon. I'm a Malaysian. Uh, Malaysia ex photographer for Fujifilm. Okay. Uh, actually, my work is mainly with uh, in black and white photography. I like to do uh, documentary and some travel photography, and uh, those are some uh, um, uh, my sponsors in throughout the years. That uh, after I actually uh, quite active in uh, photography in Malaysia. So what do I do? Uh, most of the time, uh, this is actually my first uh, documentary project in Cambodia, which I shot. I shot the uh, uh, people staying alongside the uh, railway tracks in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Okay, so some uh, documentary photos. I like to shoot children also. Okay, so um, this is the uh, uh, photos that I uh, I did. Okay, in year two thousand. 13 and 2014 uh, in two years i traveled to this place for five to six times uh, to just take photo of this the people down here okay so this is my first ever uh, project or i can say a documentary series mm, okay. and then uh, some some other times if i have i'm traveling i have some spare time i do like to take some uh so-called fine arts thing also some long exposures okay, okay. Yeah. photograph in uh, most of the uh, long exposures uh, are do in malaysia because uh, uh, we have very uh, beautiful coastline and this is my second uh project also did in cambodia during 2014 Okay, this is near uh, Samrat, okay, the uh, international travel, uh, so called tourism city, uh, where we uh, stay there to go into Angkor Wat. So and basically, you do a lot of travel and documentary photography also, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, this, uh, 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 we consider this is street also, because uh, there's no uh, exactly de definition of street photography. Street photography doesn't mean that you need to shoot on the street, okay? It's something like you just go to a public area or you just walk out from your home, okay? It's considered street photography, right? That's so really this is a uh, rubbish dump site uh, 30 kilometers away from Samrep, okay? Those, uh, people, they are uh, digging those uh, rubbish uh, to try to find metals to resell, okay? This uh, the, the, the how do you they work under the yeah. people here? Yeah. Yeah. I, guess, I guess for you're right for street photography, basically mm. no clear definition. Like, I mean, it's mm. something that you know, whatever mm. when especially when you travel, right? We like to take photos, right. so we see mm. Uh, mm. it's all you know, street photography. Uh it's whether you know what our different style is, like some people like to shoot in a way that is more uh journalistic, some people like mm. to you know post them a bit more. Uh, uh -huh. I guess right or wrong also, uh, but yeah. really depends on individual style and things right. like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it depends. And, uh, it depends on what you like, right? Yeah. yeah. So, see, so, so I normally I don't know why I I don't post them. I just uh go, go go in there to be uh something like an observer. I look uh, yeah. 
uh, what uh, their life starts and stick some pictures right. to just document uh, on those things. Okay, so yeah. this is actually uh, what I do uh, most of the time. Okay, so maybe Thomas, you can show us uh, uh, just a few pictures uh, of your uh, the project to see how uh, maybe share some of your thoughts and. Uh, ideas about some of the street photography style that you have um okay so let's go back to the slide and um, um here okay so uh when i go travel actually um mm. this uh photo was shot in egypt this is the camel market okay so um Actually, the main uh, objective of travel to Egypt, I uh, like to shoot some uh, stories that I want. Okay, um, so this is some uh, some uh, so-called spare time that uh, during we tra uh, travel from one town to the other. So uh, we go. Hey, sorry, and, uh, I cannot really see. Are you sharing the Egypt photos yet? Yeah, uh, you can't see. Yeah. Okay, let me share the screen again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can you see? Yep, can see the photos. Okay, so this is the uh, 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 photo that I took, okay, in the uh, camera market, all right? Uh so we just look around and observe what's happening when we travel and we look at uh, the culture over there and of course uh, do do find some uh, special angle or whatever to, to uh, do some street shot and of course this is in egypt also so when actually when we do street photography um for myself i always look for a special or a good background okay and okay. of course we look for likes okay and stay there to wait uh maybe some someone pass by or some interesting uh, thing will happen so just uh take the photo okay this is some some uh, uh some tips that i uh, i will do like, when we do uh street photography okay so, so how long do you usually wait for for them when you take all these photos like actually uh, like mm, actually like this photo uh, uh, in doing street photography or uh, what i can say doing uh, documentary photography the 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 ability to anticipate what is going to happen is i think is very important for the for a photographer you see yeah. so uh, yeah. when we see a, a good background or a good location and environment those sort of things and you see around there maybe th there will be a someone who will pass by uh, within minutes or what you well, i don't actually encourage you to just stay there to wait something happen for hours right? it's not it's not practical so i saw yeah. because we are, we are in travel but maybe some some uh, people they are traveling with their families or friends you know the family or, or their friends might not be a photographer they will wait for you right just so you don't wait yeah. there for an hour or something like that yeah so, you just stay there and work, uh, uh, wait and anticipate uh, that there might be someone uh, passing by because this uh, little boy is playing around there. So I just he will walk by. Okay, he will come, and then I just wait at the corner there and he walk by. I just get the shot, right? And then uh, we look for uh, good lightings, good subjects. Okay, so uh, this tailor he's working in his shop. Okay, lighting is uh, very soft. Of course, uh, a little bit low light. Okay, but um, of course, when you holding a Fujifilm camera on your head in your hand, okay, so low light condition is no no problem actually for okay. Um, at least uh, I um, we look look for lights, okay, because photography, of course, we look for lights again, okay? no matter low lights, okay, soft light, okay, harsh light. This on the street, okay. This is actually the main purpose I travel to uh, uh Egypt, okay. To okay. shoot the uh, uh, bread, okay, uh, because Egyptian they had bread uh, every day. So this is uh, uh, the main uh, objective I travel. I want to shoot this story actually. All right. So we said this uh, um, when we shooting on the street, okay, walk around. You you will discover okay something interesting, something 
which is very uh, meaningful to take photograph. Okay, so do more uh, uh, as an explorer. You know, go, go inside some small alley to to find something interesting to shoot. This I, I found it. Okay, when we, when we are I, I'm shooting the uh, 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 factory that uh, baking bread. Okay, so just a few doors away inside a small valley. Uh, I found this. Uh, they are applying the uh, uh, little string there with a lot of colors. Okay, because it's really low light inside there. Okay, so I, I when I looked at this thing, I like it. So I stay there for a few hours to take some photograph. Okay, this is how I actually. Guess, I in, uh, a of of it's a lot of a lot to do with uh, uh, observing and uh, maybe also also exploring a bit, a bit yeah. to to. To look at look at things and find out things about what to shoot. Probably mm -hmm. we besides when we travel, we do not have an uh, idea of what we might want to shoot. But we just mm -hmm. go to the and just see what we can see and uh, maybe create some images from there, lah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, yes. Because uh, we, we we it's not like a uh, uh, let's say uh, the first project that I did. I know. Uh, I go to Non Pen. I want to go to the real red track side alongside those things to shoot the people down there. I really know what I can see, yeah. you know. And, but of course, when we we reach there, we explore for interesting subjects or happening kind of thing to to shoot. But of course, when we travel, we don't know. We don't right. know what we can uh, uh, get uh, unless you travel with some photography trip that uh, uh, they call it a stage those subject for you those kind of thing you know you, you, will, you will get those kind of picture back right oh, 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 oh. just right when they stage everything for you mm -hmm. yeah but mm -hmm. uh I, I guess like what you mentioned if if we are on a project we probably know what we want to capture mm -hmm. but traveling which i'm sure a lot of the viewers viewers here travel a lot as well and mm -hmm. sometimes travel, maybe Really got no idea what to do, but really as an observer, what we can see, whether is it the lighting or whether is it the composition or different kind of uh, composition that we can, you know, create images that be more interesting. Mm -hmm. So actually, um, for myself, uh, throughout the years of, the, of learning of photography, I when we reach a location, something like this to take photographs, sometimes we don't actually... Uh, uh, um, really look for special angle you know because yeah. uh for me if i guess for me the uh, the story or the emotion or the the moment that you capture in the uh, uh the picture is really important rather than you look for some special angle uh uh, uh climb into something or get some frame of the frame those kind of thing to try to create some wow factor but eventually, you don't get the uh, the, the, the good story behind the the, 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 the photos. Uh -huh. uh, I guess you're right. Sometimes, sometimes it's about the story. Sometimes we might mm -hmm. not get a wow photo, but it's not mm -hmm. the story behind it that makes it special. Yeah. So so this is another uh, uh, series of photo I took uh, last year in okay. uh, in China. This is a tea house uh, series. Okay. Um, most of the people, uh, of, of course, photographers from uh, Malaysia, when they travel uh, to shoot tea house in China, they will go to Chengdu, okay? The yep. uh, very yeah. famous Guan Yin Ge. But yep. uh, uh, I, I, I shot the Guan Yin Ge before, so uh, uh, two years ago when I travel in China, in uh, Inner Mongolia, I actually share my pictures with uh, photography lecturer. Uh, he's a photography lecturer in Guangzhou. So when you look at my picture, you say you should go and explore more uh, uh, tea culture of China. So he recommend me to this location near Nanjing. So I do travel there. I go there, okay, and uh, take some photograph, okay, understand the uh, uh, history and the culture behind this place. It's a, it's actually not a particular tea house. It's a tea house street. A lot of tea house there, okay. So. Even people sitting out there on the street, okay, to enjoy tea, okay, to uh, uh, talk to their friends, something like that. Huh? So, so this is the whole thing, uh, something that you can see. I, I guess it's compared to the one in Chengdu, right? But the one in Chengdu, 
It's like a lot of people be there, done that. Mm. Mm. It's a bit different, like the, how the people respond to photographers. But over here, mm. probably the people respond to photographers a bit differently. Yeah, uh, it depends on uh, where you actually uh, go to, right? Uh, yeah. In uh, taking photograph, especially street, sometimes you be strangers okay and sometimes okay let's say we, we travel to those uh, uh tea house um it's considered street photography also but those uh, uh people down there they are used to photographers okay so <laughs> it's not it's not uh, nothing uh, uh shy or whatever uh, but of course as a photographer uh, to respect uh uh the uh the, the person that we uh, want to take photography when we're holding the camera walk around we look at those people you know of course the most important thing always uh, with a smiling face ah, ha, 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 uncle you're good ah, ha. and then just take the photograph this okay. is how we do yeah. uh. it one of the guys just asked a question do yeah. you ask for permission when you shoot the people uh it depends okay so um let's say the tea house you don't need because they're used to follow you know, those those guys can carry camera coming in of course they are going to take pictures of yeah. all i mean in uh Chengdu, Guan Yinke, there are a few old men they don't like people to take their photograph so actually yeah. when you walk near them with a camera on, in your hand they will you, know, you, you, you sometimes we need to learn to see uh others face expression uh, also right. when they don't show you friendly uh expressions of course don't take their pictures okay yeah. so for my style i don't ask okay even show, uh in the street on the street i don't ask because i like to take uh the photograph of their lifestyle in the most natural way so if yeah. i say ah, uncle ah, let's say a chakwe uncle i want yeah. to take his photograph of chakwe i say uncle ah, can i take your photograph and uncle said oh you want to take my program uh, chocolate yeah. uh, he, the, the, the guy start to act, act, act uh, uh, right, right. Uh, start flying i don't want those things okay so it's uh, nothing wrong to ask and for me uh, let's say uh take a picture of a stranger you feel don't you don't don't feel happy right you show me a, a, a angry face or whatever I'll, I'll just smile at him if he's still not happy okay i'll go uh, in front of him and show him the picture. This is the picture I took just now. Okay, so if you don't uh, uh, feel comfortable, I'm uh, uh, sorry. Just go away. I uh, guess, I guess mm -hmm. for, for us, for travel photographers, for street photographers, mm -hmm. I think what's very important is um, to me la, I always feel that mm -hmm. to respect the people. I, I don't ask, so I usually don't ask. I will just mm -hmm. show them this, but mm -hmm. I will not try to. Although I don't ask, but I will not. Make myself such a nuisance to them, la. Like maybe they are doing mm -hmm. something. I try yeah. not to stop them. Not so to disturb them, yeah. and then uh, respect people. Of course, when yeah. when we take taking photograph, one or two shot, and uh, eventually the, uh, the the let's say yeah. that yeah. okay, we 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 are shooting, look look at you. So yeah. just yeah. put down the camera. Just don't just ah keep on taking. Put down right. the camera. Give them a smile. If the response is not good, just say sorry. Thank you go yeah. if you get mad with you of course you can uh, always delete the photo or whatever yeah. i guess right. the problem with a lot of people is a lot of times when i bring my students overseas to shoot oops sorry when i bring my mm -hmm. students to shoot uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people this problem when they shoot right let's say mm -hmm. i'm shooting this person in front of me i keep mm -hmm. on shooting and they feel to re realize that science people mm -hmm. are not happy and yeah and you make people feel very uncomfortable so i guess what's very important like uh, the view there, like when you shoot try to maintain a smile also and sometimes even yeah. they, they they don't feel very happy or don't feel very comfortable but, but when mm. you smile at them right mm. they, they just close one eye they are not really too bothered by it yeah, yeah but, but for me the most i think the most important thing of talking about uh, uh respect uh, yeah, yeah. others okay so when we take uh photograph of a stranger okay on, on the street okay so uh we need to keep a, a, a distance between ourselves and, 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 and the guy okay uh that's why i like to use a 23 mm or 35 okay just keep a good distance between us and not 
because of you want to have a very uh, a powerful picture and then go nearer or although robert kappa said if your picture is not good enough you are unclosed enough the, but the, the close is not it's not a physical distance of close is yep. yeah. close right so you don't put the camera on you like that wow wow so people right. feel offended right so uh, we, we, uh, we we don't do that uh -huh. correct so i think it's very important to to have respect la, for people when we take photos yes, uh, yes. when you mention your, your lens just now i just have a question over here okay for yeah. all the viewers out there if you guys have any questions feel free to ask us any questions regarding uh -huh. street photography and things like that so keep uh -huh. the question coming in we'll try our best uh -huh. to answer, answer you guys so uh -huh. uh, one of the questions they ask is uh, uh -huh. what's your favorite lens for street photography so i guess thomas has already mentioned it your favorite is uh 23 or so right uh, 23. 23 and the 35 i like it very much uh -huh. it for depends myself, uh, okay uh, yeah how about you you, you you share some uh uh-huh for myself i like i like the 23 mm also in fact uh, -huh. uh 23 mm a lot for my street photography uh -huh. in fact a lot of people ask like you know if i can have only one lens with me while i travel which lens will i bring uh it's always the 23 mm 65 <laughs> Yeah, so unless unless I, I go to Africa and things like that, I need long lens, but otherwise if I go to a city and things like that, uh the 23 mm lens is always uh, one of my favorite lens or so la. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um uh the other question that they might mm -hmm. have one of the viewers have is do you wait for the right moment? Um I for me it depends also like when I see good light sometimes I might wait a while uh, mm -hmm. whether there's any interesting subjects but usually I like to move around like if I go where I'm in uh in say when I'm in Morocco I walk around the streets uh, mm -hmm. a lot to see things to shoot and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I might wait a bit but not waiting forever like you mentioned just now but mm -hmm. uh, what's the longest you have waited for the right moment actually? uh yeah. close to 40 minutes i think 40 45 something like that uh-huh okay in front of a, a, a good background wall or something like that okay i just need one one person walk person. through yeah. uh, one uh, uh, always there are a few uh, sometimes one one person walk by but bicycle motorcycle kacau kacau and all those kind of things will, will happen okay yeah. so i don't get what i want okay so i just wait if i have the time Okay, I don't have a time. Never mind. Okay, at least yep. I get something. Uh, 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 it's not perfectly what I want. Uh, I just just get. I uh, uh, spend more time to explore more. Maybe there are still something more interesting is coming on. I don't know. Right. I agree definitely. Okay. So, but right now, uh, uh, okay, for Singapore now we are under uh uh, uh so called lockdown. Uh, we are we are encouraged yeah. to go out. So of course, a lot of us have not been going out to shoot. For Malaysia, uh, what's the condition over there? I mean, are you guys? Uh, they have thing. been locked uh, locked down for more than fifty days. Okay, okay. Uh, but, uh, so, but since uh, last few days, I mean, this week is uh, 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 today is uh, partially uh, lifted. That uh, some uh, business uh, activities is allowed okay, to, okay. to to uh, uh, reopen their shops or whatever. But of course. Stated down there, no photography activities. Okay. Oh, they, they that, is it? You, yes, yes. Okay, you can't go to the park. Okay, you can't go jogging at the park. Those kind of things. Okay, keep social uh, social distance. And even even so, uh, they call it a special class or whatever. Uh, can't more than how many people? Those are, there's still some rules. So, okay. um, I have not been uh, shooting out there. For uh, okay. more than fifty years over this, uh. I shoot at home. I shoot at home. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, just, uh, since this kind of lockdown, okay, uh, we forced to cook for ourselves. Okay. <laughs> for the past forty nine years, I never know uh, uh, know how to cook, but now I I learn I know how to cook. But so <laughs> it's a very uh, uh, good memory. So every single meal I cook, so I take for a graph. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I guess I guess now a lot of us uh try our best to uh, cure our yeah. photo each at home, la. take some photos at yeah. home and 
that people cannot yeah. go out. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, why don't you show us some of your sure. street photograph? Okay. Sure. So, uh, I think uh, most of the uh, uh, viewers here they like to uh, view some of your pictures also. Just share with us, uh, of course, a little bit tips uh, and advice from you uh, when we travel. So, what should we do? Okay, do we? Uh, how? What should we be prepared to uh, do street photography? Uh, um, other than uh, uh, carry, uh, of course. Oh, what is in your camera bag? <laughs> oh, oh, good question. Okay, I guess I guess um, when I do street photography, okay, hmm. if, like, this trip is mainly doing a lot of street. I try to travel light, uh, Maybe hmm. just like, and just one camera in my in my hand. Um, hmm. so what I usually do is I just bring a camera like that with a twenty three mm But first, hmm. what right here, what I have here is the ST four for those of you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So so uh, usually this is just the camera, one camera I use for street photography and one sleep mm-hmm. bag in case I need to change lens. Like mm-hmm. So not that conspicuous to people. I would you know try to be as invisible as I can. So um, I look out for light and shadows and things like that, also framing and stuff. So mm-hmm. maybe I just show like you know just a few pictures to share some ideas. Um, mm-hmm. let's see. Mm-hmm. Ah, I'm having the X4 3 since you're showing the XT4. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, my setup at home. Okay, the X4 3 and the 62.4 macro. Well, I should put my okay. okay. So then it becomes a photographer at home. <laughs> so so how do you how do you find the uh SD SD X Pro 3. Oh, this is a very good. Thing. I, 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 I haven't used the X Pro 3 yet. I was using the SD4 and you know things like that, but I never test out the X Pro 3 yet. What are your thoughts uh, about it? Uh, it's a it's a very good camera. Eh, huh? uh, because uh, this is a range finder style. Okay, so when you shoot, okay, those uh, when old time or old school time, let's say when you use range finder, what another eye you can see what's happening, what's coming to your frame, those kind of thing. But uh, of course, for uh, a modern photographer, they don't do that anymore, I think. Okay, uh-huh. so uh, I don't do that also. But uh, uh-huh. since the X Pro 3, okay, uh, before I got my hand on the X Pro 3, I, 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 I watched a lot of uh, video about X, X Pro 3. In, uh, and as it, uh, they bring back the truly photography kind of thing, right? So I try to see, oh, what's so interesting about it? The first thing, no screen, no? Okay. <laughs> oh, this, no screen, no? Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we concentrate, we focus ourselves to see, okay, what's happening and uh, what to shoot, okay? So when you see that, that uh, eventually I, I try to open up my uh, left eye. Yeah, correct. See more, okay. Maybe when I, when I try to click something on the street, okay. Ah, a, a, a cat is going to come in, okay. Uh, so I just wait for a little while, and the cat come into my frame. Just click, okay. This this camera is good, especially I love this camera because of the uh the new film simulation, the okay. classic negative, okay. okay yeah. Uh, before I get my hand on this export tree. All my uh, pictures submitted to Fuji Films uh-huh. are all black and white images. So uh-huh. Fuji Film Malaysia marketing staff or even the process uh-huh. yeah, guy uh-huh. or is black and white guy. Okay? Uh-huh. Uh, no color. But since uh-huh. the, the first thing I, I get the export tree, uh, I I I read about the export tree about, about the uh, uh, classic uh, negative film simulation. Once uh-huh. once I get it, I try to be some. So eventually, yeah. I came out a series of photos with the uh, classic negative film simulation. It's S O O C. Yeah, just just now the uh, P How Street. Those photograph is in classic negative. Okay, okay? Yeah. and I don't do any uh, 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 post processing to those images because um, when I get back from China, uh, immediately after three days, we need to do a, a export three. Uh, launching events. Okay? okay, so I need to okay. rush out those pictures to, to the event. So, okay, sweep out our camera. Very good, very nice. You should try. Okay. <laughs> once, once this whole thing is over, I will borrow from uh, Fuji Film Singapore the S3 and try it out. Yeah, 
Okay, maybe just uh, I just show some some pictures, some of my mm-hmm. ideas that I thought about Sweet mm-hmm. Love. So, so mm-hmm. for me, like I mentioned, uh, same as you also, um, there's no such thing as what is how we define street photography, but basically, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever I see, you know, is uh, photos that I like to capture. So, mm-hmm. uh, this is one of the pictures that I have. Uh, this was taken in uh, Morocco. Oh, some nice kind of, in uh, street photography, I like to create some tension in the pictures. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the lighting is good, you know. Morocco is also Africa. Uh, there's very good lights and things like that. I like it when the shadow, you know, somebody was just, this old lady was walking away from me. And mm. um, suddenly there's another guy coming in f- into the shadow. So I like it a lot. Because, uh, to me, you know, it, it makes a viewer want to look at the image more. You know, what's happening? This guy in the shadow following the lady and yeah. uh, what's happening? So mm. in photography, I like to... To play Make with, uh, curious, okay, to look yeah, into more uh, into the picture. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct. So this is what I like to do. And of course, I like uh, to look at lights and things like that. So uh, this was in the church. So this was in Budapest. So uh, lights, uh, you know, leading lights and things like that. I like the two, the, the couple by the side. Uh, mm. I like coming in, just showing their profile and things like that, which I really love a lot. So mm-hmm. always... I always, for me, I always look out for lights and, and things like that also. Uh, light and shadow. Uh, contrary to what people thought, they thought that, you know, this guy was posing for me. No, this was at the bar the change in uh, one of the towns in Sri Lanka. So light was yeah. very beautiful. I saw this uh, older man, you know, standing in the light with a bit of, um, uh, standing in the shadow with a bit of light on his eyes. So I like that, that partial look very, you know, very mysterious lah. So street photography, I like to create all this mystery also in the photos. And, you know, a bit of him in the light, a bit of the bus at the back. So it looks very interesting to me. So this is mm-hmm. uh, what I always try to look out for. Mm-hmm. So uh, this was taken in Morocco. So, so again, uh, light and shadow, you know, to, to create a tension between two individuals. Lah. One mm-hmm. on the bottom right corner and one on the left. Uh, you know, they are far apart. Between them, there's this light or shadow between them. So to me, mm-hmm. I like to create this kind of um, tension in the picture to make it more, mm-hmm. make a little bit more interesting. So mm-hmm. this is another picture um, that that I like. Uh, hey, go on, uh, I, mm-hmm. Okay, I share two more pictures. Yeah. Okay, so this is another picture that I like uh, about creating stories uh, of each individual in a single frame. So, uh, uh, this is like, oops, very sorry, I need to close this. Okay. Sorry guys, just uh, I need to open up my screen again. Yeah. Okay. So what I have here is um, another two pictures that I liked. So uh, this is also taken in Sri Lanka. Uh, mm-hmm. um, at the same bus interchange as well. So I like it. I like it because uh, you know, it shows each individual doing their own thing and the light is beautiful as well. And this lady on the left-hand side come into the lights very nicely and behind her is the shadow and the other two gentlemen by the side in the light. So it shows like, you know, it's like two, two images in a single frame that makes it look interesting. I always look out for all these uh, images where mm-hmm. I do street photography. Another one that I liked uh, is this one as well. This was uh, taken in Sri Lanka So Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. So... This is what, what uh, uh, Thomas mentioned also, like what people ask mm-hmm. also, waiting for that moment. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, I was just walking around, I saw pictures that I shoot. But this one, because I saw the lights very nice, I saw these two boys, you know, running quite actively. So I anticipated for them mm-hmm. to get the light. And um, mm-hmm. I pre-focused and for them to come in. And I shot them, you know, right in the light when they are you know, moving. So I like mm. things like that. So to answer some of the viewers' question is about mm. you know, how 
how I like, uh, how we might, you know, wait for certain moments. Uh, these are times where I wait for certain moments. Uh. So, mm-hmm. uh, Thomas, there's another question that just came in. Okay. Yeah. They were asking, would you prefer S100V instead of a ST4 or ST3 plus a 23 mm to be less conspicuous? Um, uh, okay, for me, okay, although I love the S100 series, but mm-hmm. again, you know, for, for us, you know, I I have a GFS, I have ST3, ST2, and all these cameras. So mm-hmm. I don't buy too many cameras. So yes. Okay. To a certain extent, uh, S100V with a uh, S100V might be better for street photography, but mm. I'm not a hundred percent street photographer. I'm a travel mm. photographer, a wedding photographer. So to buy one more camera, uh, uh, I'm not in favor of it. Like I don't spend too much money to buy another camera. So mm. so I just stick with my SD3 uh, and now SD4 with a 23 mm, which I feel is as good. Uh, yeah, so for me, the reason of not using S100 series is more of, you know, not spending money to buy another camera. Yeah, so what about you, Thomas? What do you think? Uh, for me, my first Fujifilm camera is actually uh, the X100. Okay, the X100, the first generation. Um, okay. I, I, when I got the first um, X100 about... I think about nine years ago, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. nine years ago, I tried to play around with this camera because I like the design of the camera. Okay, so okay. Uh, I actually booked it. Okay, um, when I got it, try to play with it. Okay, uh, but at that time, sorry to say that the X100 is very, 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 very slow. <laughs> so uh, after I, I play around with it, I try uh, uh, for uh, one week, something like that, one week, uh, I decided to sell the camera and make some profit out of it because people yeah. are, are trying to grab that camera. So <laughs> just so it. So after that, uh, about another three to four years, uh, I get my first X Pro one. Uh, it's hard, like, so from that time, I never uh, put my hand on the X100 series uh, until, until um uh, beginning of this year when we have uh, uh we plan actually we plan to do a xt4 uh street photography event after the xt4 launch right so uh, uh when we go around to do recce for location i actually uh, uh, uh play around with the x100v uh, what i can tell you is after this lockdown the first thing i'm going to do is go to fujifilm uh, Malaysia to grab one one hundred V, okay, and sample the uh, white converter and the tele converter. Okay, okay. Uh, the two converter lens and put in my race bag and uh-huh. just go to do this photography. Uh, one like, thing I I love, I uh, mean I can uh, think think of this because it's something different to uh the, the the xt series of or, or the x4 series that uh, uh we, we are used to it because this uh um, x100v or the x100 series is a fixed lens thing okay yeah. so let's say you go up with just one lens okay which is the uh, 23f2 yeah so what kind of photos you can shoot or or, or you it might give you uh, I mean, so called force you to think more, okay, to move more yeah. to get whatever picture you want. Okay, this is the first thing I'm going to do after the lockdown. Uh, go to <laughs> Malaysia, it's quite near to my house. So okay. just grab the camera, right? Yeah, I, I guess you're right because um, uh, that's why I like to use fixed lenses also for my cameras because somehow it forces you to, to think. <laughs> Like, you know, mm-hmm. 35 mm or 23 mm, it forced mm-hmm. me to think, like, at this distance, um, mm-hmm. what's the framing going to be like? Yeah, so, because yeah. a long time, you, when you use a certain fixed lens, right, you uh-huh. know that that distance, right, okay, it's a bit different. Yeah, it's going to look like. Yeah, yeah I walk in and just. Uh, yeah. Like, some of the old timers, you know, the old photographers, they always used to tell me or so, they say, um, uh, practice with a fixed lens, then, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you, you can get your framing, your composition better and things like that. So I guess mm. uh, 
uh, maybe years ago when I first started photography, I did not understand what it meant. But now, mm -hmm. after all, all these years, right, as a photographer, mm -hmm. when I use fixed lenses, then I also understand, like when mm -hmm. I teach my students also, uh, when, when I use fixed lenses, it forces you to think a bit more. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I guess the S hundred V will have that advantage in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, of course, it's it's a uh, uh, mean in the uh, uh, shutter design also is a different thing. It's the uh, X hundred uh, series is the least shutter uh, compared to what we have, we have is is different thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So so uh, I would say maybe if uh, someone is a hundred percent uh street photographer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh maybe s hundred v really be be good for them la. yeah but mm -hmm. like for people like me because i shoot different genre of photography i shoot wildlife mm -hmm. i shoot things i shoot travel mm -hmm. i definitely mm -hmm. like sd4 now or gfs because i can change my lenses i can have more mm -hmm. variety of things so mm -hmm. yeah definitely um uh, there will be differences in that sense mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. because so, uh, for my, my myself uh, sometimes i do uh, uh, most of the time, I actually uh, talking about photography. I do a lot of workshops. Okay, yeah. so uh, I I do have a, a street photography workshop. Okay, yeah. so yeah. why I plan to get the hundred V is because sometimes when I mean when Chinese said uh, when you want to do something, okay, you need to look like something right <laughs> so sort of thing okay uh if you want to be a monk you need to dress like a monk okay you don't dress like a, a, a lawyer when you you're a monk so so, 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 like so for this uh, uh, <laughs> so for this uh, uh street photography workshop i plan to uh, uh, uh use the uh, x 100 v uh, here to uh, try to uh, share with my uh friends that how uh, they join my workshop okay so uh, with a fixed lens okay if i want to change what i'm not able to okay so what, what should we do uh, what kind of thinking are those kind of things it's, it's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite, it's quite a good, ca good camera okay yeah, yeah. Uh, because it, they change this new lens uh, quite a good camera mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah. interesting so i guess after after all this uh social distancing is being lifted right everybody will rush down to look at different cameras to see what suits them most yeah mm, yeah yeah okay Maybe I can share uh, one or two more pictures about okay how I look at lighting and and, and things like that. So sometimes uh, when I see certain lighting, again, um, like we always talk about anticipation and things like that. So uh, uh, this was taken in Philippines. I I was um, I was basically. Uh, uh, I, I saw the lights, I saw the colors, I thought it was fantastic. So I did not have to wait too long. I probably wait for less than 15 minutes. Then I saw a boy run past. So I shot this picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I shot I I, I I shot this picture. So, mm -hmm. so I, I loved how the light comes come into the boy's uh, uh, face mm -hmm. and uh, uh, how the lighting is like, you know, diagonal shadow from bottom right corner all the way up. Mm. So it yeah. may just have these uh, things I really like. And of mm. course, I, besides, you know, lighting and things like that, sometimes I like to play with um, uh, colors. Like, I always feel that when we compose certain pictures, we can always use colors to compose pictures or so. I guess, a lot of times when people look for composition and mm -hmm. uh, uh, look at how they compose a certain picture and things like that, they yeah, are looking at um, framing and mm -hmm. look at um, uh, how they should lines or, or perspective like, or whatever. Uh -huh. I like to look at colors also. So these uh -huh. images just to share um, Okay, hold on. Mm. So actually, there's another. I saw another questions uh, coming in. So, okay. prefer primes over zoom lens for sleep. Mm -hmm. I think there's one question, right? Uh, why do we prefer prime lens over zoom lens for sleep? <laughs> okay, but I think uh, for last few minutes conversation that uh. 
we answer that okay because prime lenses is good <laughs> yeah i guess and, yeah. it trains us to train us to be a bit more uh, aware of our composition and things like that yeah so prime lens it forces us to think more i guess mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so uh okay just to share with you about uh, mm -hmm. composition with colors so i like oh. to play with colors also so mm -hmm. like for example this image um you can see that so the colors are in tune with each other the the blue on the boy's shirt the blue on the mm -hmm. wall and the blue on the sky you know it's mm -hmm. how i like to play with colors to make it complement each other mm -hmm. I, I used to do a lot of black and white i still do a lot of black and white also but i've grown mm -hmm. to um, like colors also and how to use colors to our advantage so like mm -hmm. this one was taken in tibet so that was taken in tibet, uh no not tibet bhutan sorry so okay. uh, the red you see the red uh the three reds actually form a triangle and how i use the red to you know complement each other the colors make it more interesting and the person mm -hmm. looking at here uh as a street photo to me mm -hmm. somehow it looks a bit more interesting rather than just um uh, uh, uh just one person or whatever but just look at the colors how to complement each other but even mm -hmm. for this one also this was taken in uh, uh sri lanka as well um i love how, how the colors complement each other the red on the train and the mm -hmm. red on the man's shirt uh it all comes together very nicely and the nice mm -hmm. last one as well was in sri lanka you know, mm -hmm. was fantastic. Wow. and i saw the blue motorbike and I saw the man walking away. He was wearing a blue uh, uh, sarong as well. You know how mm. basically everything comes together in terms of colors. So I mm. like to play with colors and show how they actually complement each other in the picture. Mm. So uh, that's how I, I I I like to you know uh, uh, play with colors and things like that. Also, I'm not yeah. sensitive with colors. <laughs> that's why my all my pictures, all my images are in black and white. <laughs> I, I i like a lot of black and white also in fact i i do a lot of black and white photos but just somehow in the recent years i try to do a bit of color as well because um black and white after a while i guess um, a lot of people would be shooting black and white also so i want to uh try to break out of it lah, to mm -hmm. to make something more interesting mm -hmm. so of course uh just how somebody mentioned in the question mm -hmm. also about um uh waiting for that moment so yes sometimes i wait for that moment but sometimes the moment just happen so mm -hmm. uh, i'm just sharing some photos over here as well yeah, yeah so um this was taken in paris uh i was actually in the car so whenever i'm in the car or even last time when i'm always shooting my couples overseas my eyes are always everywhere I don't just look at one particular subject or whatever. So uh, as I was in the car, I was looking out. I saw a couple of kids. And it was just for that one, two seconds. I just shoot. And mm -hmm. I love the light. You know, it's not just that moment, but it's how the light falls on the faces very nicely. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything else will play again. So mm -hmm. another shot, moment shot again. This was in India. Um, again, walking in the streets. Everything mm -hmm. just to play nicely all the subjects are separated very nicely and uh, all of them are doing their own things so i grabbed this shot and it was just that moment the next second the whole scene will have changed so this is why, what i always try to look at like that moment shot uh where we cannot replicate that scene anymore and it's just over and it's over yeah so another shot in india um where you know the people are working and things like that i love the color so uh, different composition comes into mind as well looking at the colors but looking mm -hmm. at the hand the green on the hand the colors the movement everything comes to play in this shot as a as a street photo to to show you know i don't have to show the faces i show mm -hmm. the i show the the hand uh to show the tension again and how mm -hmm. how interesting it can be mm -hmm. and uh another shot this was in morocco as well um oh. uh, i love the I just love the then again sometimes luck plays a part. Mm -hmm. Cyclist was going past and that cyclist was in the arch coming in. So again, you know, got two subjects in the same frame, but uh mm -hmm. 
opposite going opposite direction it, it mm. creates tension to make it a bit more interesting yeah then yeah. Uh, uh this was in uh uh croatia uh no slovenia yeah so um i saw you know typical movement shot like i saw you no know, kids playing so i'll capture that movement and uh mm. you know of the elder sister giving a kiss to the little sister and mm. another shot the next picture uh this was just nice um uh, somehow the lady was looking at me uh, i saw the mm. picture as i grabbed a shot you know mm. it was not just a shot of her looking at me but a, you know, a shot of a of a of a subject flying past a pigeon flying past in front of her to frame her very nicely mm. so uh, to answer that question about movement shot these are the movements that i try to look out for and uh, uh try to be a bit you know different in some of the street photos mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. yeah maybe, maybe Thomas, you can share with us uh a yeah. few more photos to show us uh maybe some of the ideas uh that you might have behind some of the images um okay uh so since uh william yeah yeah i understand that you just got your new xt4 right? oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. Maybe I just show you guys for uh -huh. for you know because Singapore now we are under lockdown, so so some of the mm. guys cannot go out. In fact, everybody cannot go out to take a look at the camera. So just mm. to show people the size between the SD four and the SD three. Mm. So um, okay, just a quick look. So actually, there's not much size difference. Mm. The one without mm. the ST4, the other one is the ST3. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of size, there's not much difference. Uh, this one does not come with the grip. So the grip is definitely bigger, but the camera size is actually not that much of a difference. I would say it's mm -hmm. pretty much bigger in size. Yeah. So um uh well, I guess a lot of the viewers might have seen me talking about ST4 in the previous uh, uh broadcasts. So mm -hmm. I probably not going to say too much about camera except except that of course you know you can do all your uh flip screen and things like that so mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people would have known already so um yeah the 180 360 flip screen so mm -hmm. people enjoy it of course the evs as well but mm -hmm. uh uh i was using a lot uh, when I did the ST4 project in Japan, but the one was on wildlife. So maybe Thomas, I uh, understand you also did some street photos with the ST4. Maybe you can uh -huh. show us some of the pictures you shot with the ST4 and how do you feel is the difference between the other cameras and ST4 when you're doing street photography? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I did prepare some uh, pictures with uh, uh, that I shot with the ST4. Um, yeah. Because some of the uh, uh, my friend again, they are they are using XP three of course, and yep. uh, they asked me well, why what is why I need to upgrade to uh, XT four. Um, I said if you if you are using an XT three, uh, you 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 don't need a, 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 a image stabilizer. Okay, you all, 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 by all means you can stay with your XT three. But of course. Okay. If you are something uh, you try to you like to uh, uh, shoot street photography documentary something like what I am doing, uh, especially I, I, I love to shoot in low lights. Okay, so this XT4 actually helps a lot, and especially when uh, we shoot. Okay, there's one question over there. I think I can uh, we can still answer that question. Do you post or stage your photos? Okay, those uh, post or stage. 99.9% no for me okay so uh this xt4 uh, the uh, the 360 uh, flip screen that uh, just william just shown us is actually a very good tool eh? because when uh, i go and take photograph especially I, I i like to shoot a particular person or subject or whatever sometimes you just can't have enough space or the angle you can't actually reach you need to put your camera somewhere else then you need the flip screen and to uh, to look at the screen to do your compositions also i think this uh, xt4 is a uh, uh, flip screen really helps and then when we hold the camera away from our body something like this okay holding the camera away or something like this is not in a uh, hold like this it tends to have camera shape and especially in low light condition so this xt4 uh this uh, so-called the uh, 
image stabilizer, the screen is really good. Uh, it's a really good tools. What I can say, uh, of course, some of my friend they will talk about the fifteen frame per second, those kind of thing. Uh, if you're not, a, uh, if you're a sport photographer or something, something like a wildlife photographer like you, uh, Williams, you need the fifteen frame per second, right? So because you need to capture the the movement, yeah. those yeah. kind of things. Okay, yeah. but for myself, uh, uh, most of the time I don't don't use bird shot, bird shot, shot or something like that. I don't need the so called fifteen frame per second, those kind of things. But uh, one more thing is very important: the new battery of the XT4. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I managed to get seven hundred plus shots from one battery. Okay, oh, so okay, nice. Nice. Oh, yeah, seven hundred plus shots with one battery. So let's uh, share with you guys some of okay. the pictures that I took with the XT4. Yeah, uh, that's very good because um, uh, when I was shooting in Japan for wildlife, right? Mm. I so. Mm -hmm. so i cannot have a clear reflective of like you know one battery can can shoot how many shots but you mentioned it very nicely you know 700, mm -hmm. what, 700, 700 yeah that's because, good uh while i'm uh shooting the um the video i mean the uh, promotion video of xt4 for fuji from malaysia okay but yeah. at the time i only have one battery i only have one battery okay. uh, i don't have spare battery okay so uh i know that uh, when I run out of battery in uh, some way in the evening, <clears throat> I know I already have uh, seven hundred overshots in there. So it's seven hundred overshots. Okay. So this is one of the uh, photo I took with the XT4. The uh, first round I go to uh, try out the camera. This I shot in uh, Sungai Lembing, Kuantan. Uh, and old uncle he's uh, he's doing uh, 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 repairing those watches. Uh, uh, this uncle is very good. Okay and okay. uh so this is one of the picture and okay. the other one coming up okay same thing same uncle okay um this is the uh the color the film uh the film simulation i love the classic negative okay, okay. classic negative with, with the uh, uh this shot okay so uh i'd like to share with you uh series of photograph that mm. I took in a place called Sungai Lima. Okay, okay. it's just nearby a uh, uh, very famous small island Pulau Ketam, where it's in uh, Klang's land. Oh. This okay. place uh, produces the uh, uh, largest supply of dry stream in Malaysia. Okay, okay. so yeah. when I have this XT4 and I need to do a, a promotion video for Fujifilm Malaysia, I decided to bring the XT4 to this place Okay. to uh, document the story of dry stream okay, okay. so let's uh, share with you guys the uh, slideshow of this uh, sure. pictures okay. uh, shot with the xt4 in black and white okay, okay. And, uh, which lens were you using uh for this i'm using the uh 1655 okay okay, okay. Uh, because it's uh, uh the time is is for the video uh promotional video purposes i need to use the 1655 and some one or two pictures i shot with the 5140 okay, okay. so yeah. let's go come okay <laughs> okay. low light condition really low light Yeah, we are looking at the photos. Uh, uh, do you shoot black and white out from camera, or should you, or, or do you shoot in color and process it in black and white? Okay. Uh, most of the time, uh, I don't take most of the time. When I take photograph, I don't actually convert my camera picture profile or the film simulation into black and white. I don't. So I want to look into my real finder. I like to look at the real world. Which black and white is something out of the real world. It's something different kind of thing. So I don't actually uh, convert my uh, film simulation in the camera. It's still in color. I should go. Black and white, you protect it. After that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's convert after this. 
เขาก็ชอบบอกไอ้แกสบายเซลฟ์เขาบอกว่าสุดไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ Okay. Yeah, if you are interested in this series of picture, okay, you can always uh go with, to visit my uh uh my page, my Facebook. Okay, this all this all, all these pictures is, is there. This picture start is from the uh, XT4. Okay, let's go back to the uh, question that uh, 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 a friend asked that uh, do I really when I, mean, I take photograph do I shoot in Black and white mode. I don't do that. Okay, uh, I like to look at the real world. Okay, okay. And, uh, because um, I like to feel the uh, the atmosphere, the environment. So even though we are looking into the electronic viewfinder now, okay, especially uh, the XT series. Okay, uh, so but uh, I prefer to look at the real thing. Okay, the color, the whatever is real thing. Whatever what is happening there. Uh, After that, okay, because I know when I take this series of photograph, the the end result is black and white photograph. So when I shoot, I follow the uh, so called rules of taking black and white photograph. Okay, yeah. actually, black and white photograph is some, not something like someone took a picture, go home, look uh, when they open up in the uh, uh, post processing software, look at it. Oh, color seems not nice. Try convert black and white and CC. It's okay. Totally it's not that 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 to to make a black and white uh 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 image, okay. Those uh, uh maybe you can get to convert a black and white photo, but it's not actually a black and white uh uh so called uh nice uh work black and white work. So uh I don't shoot in that. Uh, I post processing it most of the time. Uh, not, uh I should draw. It's okay. uh it's just that when I get the X Pro three. Uh, at the at the, at that moment, we can't have the raw converter, so I should raw and JPEGs. I see, I see, I see. I see. <laughs> But SD4, I think you also agree that the like uh for high ISO, the noise control is also better, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, it's it uh there's no not big difference with XT3. Okay, because they're having the same sensor and the uh, same uh, processor. It's just only that um you can. Able to shoot handheld, uh, in a much lower uh shutter speed. Okay, uh, because most of the uh fixed lenses, especially, uh, is compensated uh, up to six point five stops. Okay, yeah. so uh, I mean, of course, provided the subject is not really a moving fast kind of thing. Okay, so it's like a running subject, a low light. He <laughs> like to shoot with the image stabilizer. Of course, it's not practical. It's not. It's not, it's not that way. But now SD4 in Malaysia, uh, can the consumers get it from the stores already, or pre-order online, or things like that? Uh, actually, we started the pre uh pre-order last last month. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. And uh, the customers uh they are they all got the uh, first batch of uh pre-orders XT4. Okay, one of my friend. Uh, when he got it pre-order with all those pre-order uh, gifts, okay, he uh, was yeah. very excited and he just shot, take his handphone and shoot all those pre-order uh, uh, pre free gift and show me. And then he showed me one thing because in Malaysia when you do pre-order XT4, you get a sixteen fifty-five mark. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. So I, when he showed me the picture, I said, "Hey, you 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 bought a new sixteen fifty-five?" He said, "No, this is a mark." <laughs> so it's very uh, very excited and uh, you can't wait to go out and shoot. I said, oh, no, 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 you can't because now it's locked up, locked down. Okay, so what should I do? Uh, shoot at home. Okay, so try because uh uh, uh all these fifty over days uh, I have been shooting uh tabletops, uh, food kind of thing. My friends going to they want to 
do that that kind of thing uh, also so i said uh why don't sometimes uh, because we shoot tabletops at home we don't use fresh we use natural light those kind of thing and when in, in the evening your shutter speed will go very, very low so if you're lazy to use a tripod try the xt4 okay yeah. with the yeah. image stabilizer uh, you, you do that yeah, your new camera just explode with it just play with it right? yeah, good at malaysia side you guys the sales are already on already likewise for singapore as well singapore mm -hmm. uh, uh consumers can actually buy from all the authorized dealer uh, mm -hmm. also online mm -hmm. because now it's a lockdown period period mm -hmm. um, the the cameras will be delivered to your doorstep so it's yeah. <laughs> the quite good eh? it's very good eh? so maybe thomas um maybe <laughs> but now um uh, uh your cambodia photos right i think mm -hmm. uh, something wrong so we cannot really see the images maybe we can share some of the cambodia pictures also we can, yeah just know when i when i share the pictures I can't see yeah. uh, just now we cannot really see the cambodia pictures so maybe we just take a look at the, at the pictures okay go back to this okay in the meantime uh this there's a question for you thomas uh yeah. they are asking since you are using prime lenses most of the time in low light um mm prefer to fully utilize the largest aperture or crack up the ISO? Um, okay, so everything there's a limitation, okay? There will be a limitation. Okay, let's say when I... Uh, when okay, we, Tom, Thomas, uh, as you're talking about this, right? Uh, just hmm. uh, Cambodia pictures, yeah. Okay, so how am I going to... Okay, this is, is this, this one? Yeah. Okay, so... You can show so, the images, yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, so either way, right? Uh, whether you boost up your ISO or your you uh, open up your largest aperture. So, uh, I prefer to open up my aperture over um, ISO, but so-called ISO that I use during low light so far with the xt3 export 3 of course the latest xt4 i set my auto iso i, I should be auto iso sometimes uh, most of the time okay especially when i i, I shoot on street okay green documentaries go under low light i shoot with uh auto iso maximum 6004 okay, okay. and okay. Um, uh, minimum shutter speed i set, set it at uh, 1 over 60 those kind of thing okay so i actually i will open up my aperture rather than uh, let the iso to 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 uh, really boost too high okay? okay to take care of the image quality but some of my friends okay uh, or uh, some students that will ask me so if you uh, open up your aperture let's say i'm i'm shooting with the uh, 2314 okay the largest aperture is 1.4 so when you open up your one point, uh, uh, wide open 1.4, so how about your image? Okay, it's going to be a uh, 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 very narrow depth of field. So there's one thing in, uh, uh, this is uh, physics, I'm not a scientist, but I learned from uh, uh, the uh, expert that uh, they told uh, me that when you, okay, when your lens focus at infinity, okay, okay so the, there's, the, the 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 picture you got is actually something like a 2d you you you, you don't have the uh, so-called three dimension kind of view anymore let's say you know, when you uh focus at infinity you put 1.4 okay the subject of course when you focus at infinity mean the the subject is is the distance of your lens to the subject of course it's more than the uh, uh the focus distance of your your lens right so you you, you 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 should focus at infinity so when you focus at infinity you should at 1.4 it's not actually you you not, don't really get so narrow of that depth of view those kind of thing okay, okay. let's say when uh, i i uh last time when i i think three years ago when i shoot in Chengdu, the guan Yin Ge, the tea house okay, okay. this tea house we need to go in to shoot early morning. Uh, yep. This this Chengdu Guan Yin Ge in the uh, uh, morning, let's say about around nine to ten p ten a.m. nine to ten a.m. There's a lot of photographers, a lot of uh, photography 
street photographer coming in. The uh, the those kind, they uh, uh, the tour leader will bring them. Okay, yeah, so really yeah. from around nine to ten a.m., the tea house is full of photographers. So if you need to shoot something that you want, you need to go really early, about four something, four something a.m. Yeah. to wait for the the boss to open up the shop, do the preparation. So it's really really dim, low light. So most of the time, I would rather. Uh, uh, put up my uh, uh, 1.4 lens, okay? When I have the distance uh, between myself and the subject, I will always shoot at 1.4, okay? It doesn't matter. You won't feel like, oh, it's only the, the, the face sharp and then everything else got blurred. It won't happen. Uh, especially you shoot with a white, let's say a 16mm right. right. or 23, okay? You shoot at 1.4, or you have a, 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 a distance that your lens is focused at, at infinity. You don't, you don't get those so called, oh, or only get the face uh, or the head sharp and everything blur off. Uh, you don't, you don't That's that. why I love the 23 1.4 because somehow, because it's, it's, it's 23 mm, it's white. So even if mm. I shoot 1.4, right, the mm. first area will not be that obvious or so. so yeah, it yeah. I mean, if it, with the 16, you need to really go close to your to your, to your your subject. I mean, your focus point should be really, really close. Okay, then you'll have the uh, so-called uh, bouquet thing there. Actually, but, uh, for, for, for me, okay, I love the uh, uh, Fujifilm system is because of the depth of view as well. Um, okay. Because we are using the uh, uh, APS-C sensor, right? So talk, talking about the depth of view, um, when most of the people down out there, most of the photographers out there, they will say, oh, when you use the APS-C uh, uh, format camera, 35 is e equivalent to 50, law, something like that, right? So it's actually, do, do the lens will convert from 35 to 50? It's not, it's only the view, angle of view. Ma. So uh, in that case, okay, if uh before I, I, I convert to, to, to Fujifilm, I'm using full frame, of course, okay? so. Uh, let's say uh, uh, some uh, that particular scene that I love to get the depth of view of five point six. Let's say uh, yeah. I'm using uh, 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 one three five format. Yeah. Okay, so um, in APS-C, uh, actually, if I want to get back the same uh, depth of view kind of uh, feeling in that particular scene with the APS-C format. I actually can shoot one stop wider. Let's say uh, instead of 5.6, I can shoot it at f4. I gain one stop of light, yeah. okay? Yeah. So uh, uh, in low light, okay, talking about uh, ISO performance and plus this point that, okay, uh, why I convert from that 36 megapixel so-called 135 format to uh, four different ways because that uh, from, from that time, because it's a 36 megapixel, Kind of thing okay the iso performance at that particular moment is not that good okay so i tried the uh xt1 at the time and i think i found that uh the xt1 uh iso performance is somewhere around one stop better than the uh the the, the, the 36 megapixel camera that i'm using and then because of the this theory also like instead of 5.6 i can shoot it with f4 so i can two stop lights from uh, to just okay yeah. 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 i just thought of a question like i, I was talking about cambodia pictures just now right then of mm. course uh, got that question uh another question that came up uh mm. you were asking you know uh uh do you actually you know with strangers as a street photographer as a travel photographer do you, uh, how do you, uh, get, do you get close to the subjects like the people that you choose, uh, the people that you shoot? Do you actually get yeah. to know better or, or, or make friends with them, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, especially the uh, story kind of thing, the serious kind of photograph. Let's say you, you just walk on the street, you see someone, you just take one or two pictures and go away. Sometimes you, you might just give a smile, hi, thank you. you know, Right. So, uh, but for those pictures that I saw, so, uh, I, I showed you just the I mean the Cambodia series, that two series, uh, I make a lot of friends there. Okay, because when uh, uh, we go in to take pictures, uh, those are all stranger for, for 
first time you go in, right? When yeah. you take your camera, walk around, and they will look at you, uh, what, you what you do, do so, those kind of things, right? So when we try so to... Uh, yeah. Barrier. How do you break the barrier? Because I... Uh, first thing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, smile. smile. Yeah. Uh, look at people, smile, hi, hello, hello, those kind of things, okay? Uh, but uh, for, I, I'll give an advice for street photographer, or you would like to do a uh, street photograph or even documentary travel photograph to shoot people or whatever. First thing, don't offer streets to the children. Oh, Please. yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. pay yeah. one dollar, one dollar to. Right. to, to I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to get close to people, okay, there are a few ways, okay. Uh, sometimes the easiest way or the uh, most common way is to offer them, uh, let's say, old man uh, uh, or uh, adult man or uh, offer them a cigarette or whatever okay <laughs> so a photographer okay that would like to travel uh, and explore ar 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 around even though you don't smoke uh, bring one or two packs of cigarettes <laughs> with you and they offer to, to those people that they can smoke and uh, they will smoke you can shoot also right <laughs> so beside beside that okay so when you walk around it's with a smiling face okay try to be kind to people so um after my first trip to Cambodia, Phnom Penh, I learned something, okay? When we reach look, the location, when we reach the place that we are looking for, okay, let's say I want to go to the railway tracks uh, to take the photograph. We don't just go, wow, finally, I get get to this place already. Uh, take out my camera, start, boom, 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 shoot. Don't do that, <laughs> okay? So when we reach the location, okay, uh, and finally, our photographer will really excited to get, get out your, take, take out your camera, but walk around okay try to tie hi with people or talk to people if some sometimes you might uh 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 get into some good people they were hi friend where are you from those kind of thing right so you just yeah. some 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 of them will actually invite you to sit down and sit down okay have a coffee okay slum area okay <laughs> when they pass you a, a, a cup of coffee how drink uh, or not <laughs> this uh, is a very good question there uh, I think you still have to drink, lah. Do you drink? I I I I I drink because yeah. they don't take out the coffee from somewhere, ma. Okay, right. they, have a, right. they have a cup and then they pour the hot coffee into the cup. Hot so water, uh, okay. Okay, I will pour hot water into the glass and pass it to you. Just drink, lor. Okay, yep. they are not. Yep. Let's say in Cambodia, they are not passing some uh a weird kind of uh salad like like, uh, like <laughs> those, uh, 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 the, the salad to you so just uh, a co co coffee just drink okay and while all those children uh those children they 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 they, they, they love to or, or they are very curious uh why this big guy come uh, why, uh, they will start to go around you right so from there we can start to play with it i like to play with children yeah. Okay, so I like to uh, play with children and uh, try to uh, make some funny face, make them laugh or something like that. So you will get along, okay? You will get along. And after yeah. that, then uh, we talk to the, the, the people or we just simply take up the camera and because we are playing with the children. So we'll take, take, take some photograph and show them. Uh, they, from there, they will start laughing they will just look at their face and uh, those kind of things. And from there, some of them might start to climbing up to you, climb on, the, up to, on top of your hand, playing with your hair. Eh, pulling your camera strap, so let them play with you and you play with them. I, I think that's good advice. I, I, I guess, I mean, like yourself also, we bring our people overseas for workshops and things like that. I, I guess the the one thing that we notice amongst uh, hobbyists is that mm. sometimes do street photography, they, like what you mentioned just now, they go to a place, but very can take out the camera, shoot, 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 shoot. Mm. They don't make. They don't make the environment comfortable to them. Mm. You see, always first thing that comes to mind is we mm. have to be comfortable in the environment. But what is more important is that environment has to be comfortable with us because mm. we are injured in that new place. So mm. people, if that place is very touristy, maybe mm. they are deeper, but the sometimes we explore yeah. places that are not, not touristy and they are not used to you know people doing all these things. So mm. what you can do, like, you know, uh, talk to them, let the environment seep in and get comfortable with me. And after uh -huh. that, you know, things will just flow very naturally. For me, another thing that I like to do is um, I like to bring the Instax camera. 
the instant yeah. printer. Yeah. yeah, I bring the SP3. So sometimes I print one or two pictures to them, right? Mm. Then after a lot of them will start to crowd around you and sometimes they mm. they uh, uh, shoot me, shoot me, give me one picture, yeah. something like that, right? You okay. get a chance to do it. Right. So although I don't want to create pictures of them looking at the camera too much, but after a while, because they're comfortable, right? When I go around, um mm. they will not really get to annoyed with my presence so which is yeah. good they get used to it they get used to you 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 being around right so uh there's another tips that um uh, when we go to something like a new places new place again okay, uh, we start to uh to to not to spoke the personal or the, the people down there so make your camera as simple as possible <laughs> yeah uh, take off the lens hood whatever yeah. just um my friend asked me why you downgrade from <laughs> uh, the M3 5 format to APS-C. Uh -huh. I'm not downgrading. I'm getting more pictures because this thing look like toy camera. Correct. Okay? Uh, but it don't look like a toy camera. I don't look like a, a professional photographer with a big arsenal that it really sometimes it, it looks offensive, you know, to some right. people, in some area. So when when I take out this kind of small camera like a toy, okay, yep. they just see me as, as a, a normal tourist. They will, huh? you get easier. I just give you an example in uh, Kuala Lumpur, Petaling Street. Okay, yeah. one uh, small area that's just, is going into the uh, is a is a pasa. Okay, that's why the few uncle there are selling fish and chicken or whatever. They don't like photographers to take their photos. Okay, okay. So when you go in, you will get score or whatever. But one day I bring in the that time is still the Expo one. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, I, I go, I go in, I hang my camera in front of me. I don't show because I know that camera that the uncle yeah. they happy. They don't like people to take their cameras. I meant to yeah. take their photos. So we are hanging this uh, uh the Expo one in front of me. Uh, I just stand there. I look at them, they bang, 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 do their work, they're chopping chicken, uh, fish. Okay, so I think after 10 minutes, something like that, one uncle, okay, the, the, the uncle that's selling fish asked me, hey, you still use film camera? Ah? <laughs> Not even change digital camera, very advanced thing, or you still use? Because this thing, the Explore one, of course, seems similar like this. But this thing looks like a very old retro camera. So uh, you still use film camera? Ah? Then you know what uh, uh, my answer? Yes. I, I never cheat uncle uh, because it's Fuji film camera. Man. <laughs> so, uh, uncle asked you, do you still use film camera? I said, yes. Uh, Why you use film camera since everybody use digital? I said, film different. Okay, because uh, the old type of feeling of the film, uh, uh, whatever character, uh, whatever story I, 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 tell, I, I tell the uncle. And then the uncle said, oh, like that. Uh, so why you come here? Uh, because when I said this area, uh, because I, I, I don't think after you plan to retire, your son will take over, okay? So this place will be vanishing soon, okay? Sooner or later. So I, I try to come in to take some photograph, okay, to record down this place. And then uncle suddenly said, shoot me. And I start to shoot. It takes no one. <laughs> it's one story, la, that I'm right. I'm sorry, right? <laughs> Begging him la, like ask let him ask you to shoot. You don't have to ask for permission. Let him ask you to yeah, shoot. I'm just saying if you if you shoot him without his permission or you, you even though you ask the uncle don't like, right? Uh, if you don't don't ask uh, if you don't even even ask the uncle might chop you instead of the chicken. That, that's a very good thing also. And also another thing is that I like to use okay for me, I always feel that when you take street photos and you always do this, right? Is yeah. it obvious? photo so sometimes i shoot from the screen no? so mm. people will be somehow people don't feel that you are shooting when i hold my camera at least mm. then i walk around then i just shoot no? i just mm. shoot it's not obvious people uh -huh. don't even think actually mm. so especially for places that is more hostile like uh 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 in morocco in north korea mm. where people don't really like you to take photos um mm. morocco the kids might you know sometimes throw things at you so so when you shoot at this, it's not obvious. So they are so somehow it's okay. You know you don't get much of a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So because, Thomas, uh, you got yeah. uh any more photos to share? No, so, no I I don't uh prepare uh, some photos today. Okay. I just, uh, okay. Uh, I thought you were trying to say something again. 
Uh, no, I mean uh, another thing is that um, because uh, I think food, I mean last time when uh, this Fujifilm camera that we can actually connect our smartphone with the uh, camera that you can remote shoot from your, from your, from your phone, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's it's another it's another tool uh, when you uh, doing in a uh, documentary or streets like some sensitive uh, location. Okay, one of my uh, story in Cambodia also because I did a few stories in Cambodia. One of my stories in Cambodia uh, is the uh, illegal minings. Okay, they they take gemstone illegally. Okay, okay and then uh, uh, after they they have those stones and someone will come and buy from them, but that guy will give will offer very very low low price and of course okay. illegally buy from them. And when 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 I'm shooting the story of this uh, so called illegal mining in uh, Cambodia, uh, the whole story uh, is around there. It's only okay. one thing I can't get is the after they have the stone, someone will buy from them. This is the story of that so called illegal mining man. Okay, so uh, but they don't allow me to take photograph and they sell and buy those kind of thing happen, happening. Okay, openly actually, actually opening. Uh, you can stand there and see, but you can't take photo. And don't shoot, don't shoot because that, that guy don't like his face to be exposed. So what I do? Uh, sometimes I say don't shoot if that person don't like or whatever. Okay, we don't shoot. But this uh, is something related to my story. I I need to have. At least one photo that shows uh, is 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 on the trait that the gemstone. So I hang my camera on with a strap. Okay, so just like that, no? The camera will will compose for me, ma. Because I'm looking at the phone, ma. Yeah. I, I look at the phone like something. I am playing my phone. Just chup, 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 one two shot. Go. Okay. Uh, it's a good move. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but until today I st still haven't show those photo yet uh, because the whole series is not uh, completed yet. Uh. Okay, okay. Another question that just came in: If uh, uh -huh. you want to get a first mirrorless camera for street photography, uh -huh. how would you choose between S Pro Two and XT Two? Well, I guess I, do, uh. I guess we don't talk about really, <laughs> We talk about S Pro series and ST series, lah. Uh -huh. Because. S Pro 2, S Pro ST2 is very old cameras. Maybe we talk mm -hmm. about S Pro series versus ST series for mm -hmm. uh, street photography purpose. Uh, maybe Thomas, mm -hmm. you have first between S Pro series and ST series. Which one would you prefer for street photography? Okay, so, but the first thing that uh, I like to share with uh, Jasmine Fu. Okay, so why uh, not X Pro 2 or T2? Okay, because P3 Pro 3, we have a brand new sensor which is a, a BSI sensor. Okay, it's really good in low light condition. Okay, perform very well with uh, ISO. Even though uh, I just share with you, uh, if you happen to see the uh, long exposures uh, photos that I took, okay, I love to shoot long exposures, um, especially uh, in the coastline of Malaysia. Um, I shoot with. Uh, 16 stop of ND. So most of the time, I uh, the long exposures is around four minutes to eight minutes. Okay, when you shoot with the old sensor, okay, the third generation uh, kind of thing, okay, the minute that the sensor in the X Pro Two and the T Two, okay, you tends to get uh, hot pixels, okay, very strong uh, 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 noise if you expose I mean, the long exposure more than three minutes. Once uh, the X-T3 came out, okay, I mean the X-T3, X-4, 3, X-T4, and even the uh, X-100V is, is having the uh, BSI sensor. So uh, the first thing I'm going to try out the X-T3 when it came out uh, two years ago. Straight away, I bring it to East Coast, Tengganu, uh, Malaysia, to try the X, uh, I mean the long exposure. If long exposure, no problem, means this camera is perfect. Okay, the X three for me. So uh, when I reach the location, I compose everything. I put on my sixteen stop ND filter. I just okay shoot for eight minutes, few few shots. Okay, I don't really actually let the sensor to rest for one or two minutes after one shot. Okay, I just uh uh what you call surprisingly the the picture is very 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 clean. 
Okay, so I just uh, uh, immediately report back to uh, Fujifilm and make sure that uh, this is great. Okay, it's actually totally different sensor. Okay, so not in the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay, so come back to the question Pro or T series? If, okay. if users don't need exposure, mainly mm. for selfie, between the mm. Pro and the ST series. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, for the uh, Pro or T series, okay. If, it depends on yourself uh, if you are uh, you are using i saw in the question getting a first mirrorless camera that means you are having a camera now is it an slr let's say you are you're used to the slr you 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 compose you look at the camera you 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 are, you are used to look at the center okay get the xt series okay you like try to uh explore something new okay you don't actually uh, there's nothing that this is good for or that is good for this kind of thing okay it's whether you feel comfortable when you hold the camera okay so whether you you feel good when you hold the camera and take photograph it okay let's say uh, the uh, uh, xt series is something similar to to your slr kind of thing the, the control whatever is you know, once you hold it on your hand you can start shooting whereas uh, don't actually try to be something like me because I used to be a GAS before. You know what is GAS, huh? You know what is GAS, huh? I assume. <laughs> GAS is syndrome, those kind of thing, huh? So, so because of street photographer should look like street photographer, okay? Don't actually go into those things, okay? Uh, once you hold that XT series that you, uh, you, you feel comfortable with it, that's your camera that's the camera that suit you and with that camera it's just a tool okay and with that camera you can go and take street photography shoot models macro uh, shoot food at home whatever it's just a tool right I think, yeah i think what for me also uh whatever is comfortable i i guess yeah. i enjoyed the s pro series mm -hmm. but frankly I have never owned an S Pro camera, mm -hmm. but I own an ST2, ST3, ST1, ST2, ST3, ST4. Mm -hmm. I never own a Pro series because uh -huh. for me, I think I'm so comfortable with the ST series. Oh, even though I agree that I love the S Pro series, but mm -hmm. in terms of you know buying the camera and things like that, mm -hmm. I think I I will part my money in something that I'm more comfortable with, unless of course mm -hmm. if I. Spare, spare cash, I don't mind. I'll okay? get all the pro and SD series, doesn't matter. But if I've got limited uh, resources, then mm. uh, I'm probably more comfortable with SD series, like what uh, mm. Tom mentioned, whatever you're comfortable mm. with. So, same thing I always tell people when they buy cameras, you should always go and go to the shop, play with it first, and see what mm. you're comfortable with. Because we, mm. we, what we say, right, if you're mm. not comfortable holding it right and shooting uh -huh. with it, uh -huh. uh, then, you know, also no oh, use. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't choose a camera because of someone said this is a good camera. Yeah. Okay. Now there's nothing so called lousy camera anymore. Okay. So no, let's say let's say you 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 feel one camera. This let's say you feel this camera very comfortable. You love it. Okay. But your friend said ah this is not good. That one good. So you buy that one. Okay. But when you shoot, you don't feel comfortable. Okay. Yeah. You don't actually concentrate in shooting. You don't actually have creativity. You know. Actually, to take. Uh, 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 to take good photograph, I don't mean uh, I don't want to talk those theory anymore or, or, or quotes anymore because I don't feel like uh, uh, should, uh, taking photograph a beautiful photograph is good. Uh, a beautiful photograph is not actually good, right? I'll talk about that late, uh, next time if we do if we do have a chance. Okay, so a lot of friends will ask me, uh, what lens you use to shoot, what camera body you use to shoot. Again, okay, they, they actually what lens you use to shoot, what camera body you use to shoot is not important. You have, have to look deeper into photography. The lens is not important, it's just a tool. The camera body is not important, it's just a tool. Look deeper, look inside. The lens, camera body, the back of the camera. This is determine how good is the photograph. It's not this. Okay. I guess equipment wise, we can only say the pros and cons of the mm. different equipment, but in the end, uh, mm. it very much depends on each individual, so what they like. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe, 
uh, to as uh, we should be ending soon, but I just share a set of photos, uh, just to mm -hmm. show ideas behind some of the photos. Mm -hmm. So what I have here is um, uh, more about framing. So um, uh, I, I used to have people asking me, oh, you know, street photography, it happens so fast. How will you frame and things like that? Uh, how can you frame so fast? How do you frame so slow quickly? I guess it's all comes with experiences and um, uh, shoot more. Lah. The more you shoot, the better you are. Yeah, like they always say, yeah, yeah, when you shoot 10,000 times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 10,000 pictures, you mm -hmm. definitely get better. So mm -hmm. but to show some ideas about framing, what mm -hmm. uh, uh, what 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 uh, I say about framing. So, so of course, this picture, besides framing, is also about lighting. So again, I saw the frame, I, I anticipate that, you know, they will get into the light. So that's nice to get into the light. So I got, you know, framed by the shadow and framed by the wall at the side. So the next picture, uh, this was in Morocco. Of course, this was the picture we used for the advertisement. Uh, it was quite lucky because again, like I mentioned in Morocco, people don't really like photography. I mean, even kids, they might school you also. So uh, I was walking in the streets that I saw this two kids sharing the apple and I just framed them very nicely with the wall as well, the blue walls. So mm -hmm. uh, some people might just use a 70-200 for example to shoot a close-up. But I always mm -hmm. tell people, uh, you know, uh, street photos, we try not to do too many close-up. There's more street, mm -hmm. uh, street portrait, but mm -hmm. I like to shoot more of the environment as well. So, uh, you know, frame them very nicely with the wall, with the pavement and everything. So again, um, you can see the little girl by the side coming out of the wall. So this was a bit more friendly uh, uh, kid uh, when she saw me taking out the camera and she was running around. So I just wait there and when she pop up the head, I just take a shot and I just move off. So um, science is about that moment, the anticipation, the luck and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, this was in North Korea. Again, for mm -hmm. travel photos, you know, in general, I like to show people where the place is. So I love the lighting, I love the silhouette and things like that. So, but just nice, the, the, the pictures of uh, Kim il -sung was behind as well. Uh, uh, so people, when look at it, they will know that this is actually in North Korea because of the uh, two uh, uh, pictures at the back. But um, mm -hmm. the lighting and the silhouette, it makes a very interesting picture. Mm -hmm. Then another part I have here is, uh, again, uh, show of luck. I saw the old man there with a light on his face. So I just waited a while for, you know, just nice this guy load up the things on the lorry and mm -hmm. uh, the old man was framed just nicely between the hands. So uh, just get the shot. Um, framing again in the train, uh, framing of one person behind and mm -hmm. another person at the front to show a, a bit of tension in the pictures again. And uh, another picture, Sri Lanka, um, frame the two gentlemen and just nice this lady walk past and the gentleman was looking at her. You know, it creates very interesting uh, images mm -hmm. with the frame. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the streets, um, in the dark, uh, this was a subway. I love how the frame is. Uh, you can still see the light on the lady's face over here. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all just very nice and interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka as well. Instead of shooting just the old gentleman mending the shoes, I framed him between the two guys and just nice somebody was walking down so it forms a triangle again, uh, mm -hmm. which always looked interesting. Uh, Morocco also framed with the shadows, light and uh, silhouettes. So very careful about what they wear because for example, the two people at the left-hand corner, they are wearing black so they appear as silhouette, whereas the person in the middle is wearing white. So, you know, the contrast is there. Uh, the light and the shadows, everything comes out very nicely. So these are what are the things that I look out for. So yeah, this is a bit about framing and things like that. So um, mm -hmm. I always tell people for street photography, maybe maybe uh, just look at all the different things and 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 shoot more, and you should get it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe for the viewers, maybe if they have uh, even after this session, they can type some more questions on the Facebook page if they have, we try to answer as well. But mm -hmm. to round off, um, uh, uh, Thomas, do you have any any advice for, for, for street photography in general? Like if I'm new in street photography, I, I after the, the, all this, 
lockdown is lifted. Uh-huh. I can't wait to cover. So, but I don't know what to shoot, how to shoot. Uh, just uh, sh- one sentence uh, uh, advice for people. What, what, what can they look out for when they shoot? Uh, go to look for likes. Okay. So let's say uh, 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 an area that their likes coming down or shooting on a wall that, that creates a contrast, okay, light and shadow. Don't go to look for things like that. And after that, you when you found those things, okay, so stay there or immediately there's there something happening, bicycle, people walk by or whatever. Okay, try to look, look into those things. William shows uh, a, a lot of uh, a good example of light and shadows. Okay, so I think to start with, uh, it's better to, uh, in this way that uh, you, you look for a good background first. Because most of, of the uh, newcomers in photography, they know, not, don't, don't look at the background. They always uh, focus on their subject, main subject, and they never look at look back. I look at the back the ground. So suddenly the let's say it is taking a portrait of the, the, the guy of the tree from the from the from the head or sort of things. Okay. Yeah. So, uh-huh. I guess okay, my yeah. last advice uh, in addition to what Thomas has said is mm-hmm. really to uh shoot more when you guys travel. Uh firstly, respect the local people mm-hmm. and uh, don't be shy at all. Uh shoot mm-hmm. more. Uh, I realize a lot of people are still very careful in the in the number of shots they take. But I always tell mm-hmm. people, just, you know, uh, at most, you know, the more you shoot, the better you get anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so yeah. respect, shoot mm-hmm. more, and uh, enjoy yourself. And in addition to what Thomas has said, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, stay safe also because uh, when you shoot, shoot on uh, on the street, okay. Pub, openly but public places uh, please uh, do do take care of your valuables okay take, uh, uh, stay safe because some some of my friends when, when we go to take a uh, photograph on the street because of they like to compose something and they will, will, will move around when the camera on their face they don't even look oh uh, and yeah. suddenly they, will, they just, they just go, go back go back until they go on the street uh, yeah, you have to be safe. Uh, you not because you, that, that picture doesn't work your life, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, we will end it off here. Uh, thank you very much to Thomas. And uh, thank you for all the viewers who have been watching us for the last uh, one hour plus. Oh, and, oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, one hour 45. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, of course, Fujifilm Singapore definitely will try our best to have more broadcasts with you guys. Um, mm. you know, in Singapore, our lockdown is until 1st of June. So mm. we start at home. So mm. we hope to share more of all these things with everybody as also. Yeah. Mm. So thank you again. Thank you very much to Thomas and thank you for all the viewers. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. You yeah, the, the one question I like to answer. Where oh, okay. I get my t-shirt from? Uh, this is <laughs> SA3, Fujifilm Malaysia. Okay, it's by a, a local Malaysian designer when we do promotion. Okay, Fujifilm Malaysia. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.